Stop it! Stop it, please! I beg you! <laughs> yes! Suffer, worm! Suffer! Oh, good. Good. Well, I hope you're ready for a second dose, because now you have to review it. Oh, come on, can I get a breather or something? Nope. Seriously, this is all because I did Jurassic Park? I do one good movie and now I'm being punished with this? Well, you should have thought about it when you put it on your list of movies you'd review. Now shut up and get going. Only through your pain can I and the rest of the fan base be satisfied. If I could only move my legs, I'd get up and kick your ass. The sooner you get done, the sooner you'll be free. Now get to work. No one told you that was gonna be this way Your job's a joke, you broke DreamWorks Animation is that one company whose history of films can be regarded with either praise or sheer mockery. I mean, in regards to good, we had films like the first two Shrek movies, Kung Fu Panda, Monsters vs. Aliens, How to Train Your Dragon, and my most recent favorite, Megamind. But even then, they managed to produce films that reek of unsubtle humor and really bad pop culture references. While I have yet to reach the bottom of the barrel, I am unfortunately doing one that comes close to being there. And that is Over the Hedge. I mean, it has everything that could possibly be cliché in a film. From the talking woodland creatures, to humor so unsubtle and unfunny, to stereotypical character types that when all blended together, they make this movie. And now you get the pleasure of having to see me watch it... again as I am not going to enjoy the second viewing one bit. So by all means, sit back, relax, maybe call Blizzard and tell them to rescue me! So the movie begins with our main character, RJ, who's oddly voiced by Bruce Willis. And no, this isn't the first time he's had to play an animal character. You talking to me? Are you talking to me? And apparently his character is so desperate for food, he's adapted to using a golf bag full of random things. Here's an idea. Use the golf club! It should be long enough and he could probably knock down the bag. But no. Instead he feels like going after Vincent the Bear's post-hibernation dinner. Okay, really now, just what is it with that golf bag? Is it like a bottomless pit of random things he just happens to have? If not, how can he fit that thing in there? Oh, you should talk. You have multiple bags like that. Good point. <laughs> Okay, I don't care if you're voiced by Bruce Willis, the only man who could swing down a large building barefoot by hose just to break open a window. There is no way you as a raccoon can be that suicidal. And of course, it's the sound of food that wakes Vincent up. Uh, RJ? Uh, no? You woke me up a week early? Oh no. Don't tell me you're dumb enough to actually try and steal my stuff. RJ. He's not dumb. He's an idiot. Look, it's still in the cave, so technically not stolen. <gasps> oh no! Stop! Well, at least no one's out on the road. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, I can get it all back! If you eat me, you'd have to do it. But I can get it! All of it! Alright, RJ. I'm going back to sleep. When that moon is full, I'm waking up. And don't even think about running away, because if you do, I will hunt you down and kill you. That's just one week! That's impossible for one guy! Well, you could always do what they did in Bold and just car hop across the country. I mean, hey, if you're gonna die, better to be on the road than by a bear. Anyway, it's about time we meet the rest of the cast. First up is Vern, who's voiced by Gary Shandling, and he runs a small family group of other forest animals who I guess thought living together would be better than living alone. Up, hibernation's over! Oh, morning! Morning, Hammy. I gotta go wee-wee! Oh 
nice. Not even five seconds, and I know I'm gonna hate that squirrel. Hammy, was it? And he's voiced by Steve Carell? No! You were better off in Despicable Me. Ah, finished. No, no, me, me. All right, as for everyone else, we got Wanda Sykes playing Stella the Skunk, Eugene Levy as Lou, Catherine O'Hara as Penny, their kids, Avril Lavigne as Heather, and William Shatner playing the overacting possum, Ozzy. Yeah, how fitting. Dad was just snow. But it, it could have been a predator. Isn't playing dead a little weak? Heather, how many times must I say it? Playing possum is what we do. We die. So that we live. Yes, but do you die for our sins? I didn't think so. And yeah, Vern is kind of overprotective as he wants to make sure nothing goes wrong to jeopardize their lives. But at any rate, they go off to find a large hedge wall that Hammy found, and it doesn't take long before their animal minds begin to process what this is. <clears throat> well, it's, uh, it's obviously some kind of bush. I would be a lot less afraid of it if I just knew what it was called. Let's call it Steve! Oh, great and powerful Steve! So Vern goes inside to see what he finds on the other side, and sure enough, he discovers... Suburban life. What is this place? Oh. 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 Hi. Random chaos scene! So after that mess, RJ introduces himself and tells them there isn't anything to be afraid of on the other side as it holds something they need the most. Food. What is that? That, my friend, is a magical combination of corn flour, dehydrated cheese solids, BHA, BHT, and good old MSG, aka the chip. Comes in a variety of brands, most commonly known as Doritos, available at your nearest Meyer or Walmart Supercenter. So after winning the trust of everyone except Vern, he shows everyone just how cool the nighttime of the suburbs can really be. How's that tale, Vern? Listen, if anybody in this family gets hurt, I'm holding you personally responsible. Whatever you say, Danny Tanner. After getting a glimpse of our antagonist, more on her later, RJ continues to lecture about our addiction to food. The human mouth is called a pie hole. The human being is called a couch potato. That is the device to summon food. That is one of the many voices of food. Take the food, ship the food, they drive the food, they wear the food. That is the altar where they worship. Food, 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 food! Unfortunately, things don't go so well, and soon enough, they're back on Burn's side. But I can only imagine it won't last long. Okay, this is great. Granted, it takes some time to chew, but that... That was very satisfying. Ugh, you really want them to go back over there, don't you? So RJ comes up with a new plan, which involves getting into their little family group. You see, Vern, I used to have all that. My own place, surrounded by loved ones, but then all that went away with the weed hacker incident. Oh, come here. Yeah, that feels good. All right, you can stay. Well, at least this is the start to his eventual resolve of actually wanting a family. You want to help me find my nuts? And it got blown over just like that. Plus, it's not over. What we're going for here is a vicious, man-eating rabid squirrel. Oh! A, B, Z. What? Time to see what's inside the Deus Ex Machina bag this time. Ah, ah. Now come on, I'll be right behind you. I want my cookies! I promise! Really? You need to look in a book every time something like this happens? Baby! Behind me! So now it's Vern to the rescue. Kinda. Ah. Ah. Oh, I got it! Stay still! Uh.
What the hell? Turtle ass? That is fucking gross. And now I think is the perfect time to introduce Gladys, aka the world's biggest soccer mom. And if you think Darla Dimple was a big time hater of animals, you'll sadly be mistaken. Potential pandemic on our hands, vermin running loose, spreading disease, and uh, lowering our property values. I have a casserole in the oven. Gotta run. Fine. You worry about your casserole, and I'll worry about the end of suburban peace and tranquility! Trust me, once she gets more involved, you'll grow to despise her even more. So over the next few days, they continually steal food and other things, and it seems even RJ is having fun with this new life he's gotten. And Vern? Well, he's being left behind on the fun. Our light's fading, wind's growing cold. Mother! Is that you? Beckoning me into the light? Must move toward the light. This is why you never cast Shatner as a possum. Now comes the Exterminator, or rather he's called Dwayne the Verminator. Please tell me they didn't get Paul Rubens again. Oh good, it's not. What do we have here? Didelphus marsupialis Virginian anus. Approximately 10 pounds. Male. Why am I always getting the weirdos with obsessive animal fetishes? First Mange, then Ace, now Dwayne. Oh, if you think that's bad, just wait until you see how he acts around lawn ornaments. <laughs> kill it! Kill it! Oh, so finally, something normal happens in regards to character development, as RJ is dazzled by his new personal pad given to him by his new family. And aside from things that shouldn't belong... I hotwired the HD converter. We get like a thousand channels! This is probably the only time in which I can say, good job, movie. We now return to A Scoundrel Among Us. I gave you my heart and you ripped it into a million pieces. Whoa, whoa, RJ, what are you doing, man? You were getting in way too deep. Oh, come now. Don't you realize this is better than how you're living now? Anyway, Vern is currently taking back the food they gathered because apparently that will fix everything. Instead, it'll just result in another random chaos scene. Play? Uh, play! Play, play, play! Uh, Save the Pringles! Look what you did. It's gone. The food! Gone! I returned it to its rightful owner. What? Don't you understand there's something wrong with this guy? He's embracing the future, Darren. You're just holding us back. Yeah, man. How dare you try to slow us down with your old ways of thinking? ...and in taking advantage of them because they are too stupid and naive to know any better. I'm not stupid. There, you see? You made Hammy upset. I hope you're happy. So everyone's sad. RJ has till tomorrow to get everything back. And well, Gladys has Dwayne put in the world's deadliest animal trap ever designed. Seriously, is that really necessary, lady? I mean, you have a cat too, you know. Regardless, Fern apologizes for being jealous, and before RJ can tell him the truth, he finds out that everything he needed to get is going to be at the party Gladys is throwing. So kiss and make up to the family. We got ourselves a mission. Now. The traps are set here, 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 and here. Here. Get to the point, please. This helmet's starting to make me itch. The collar is the key. What? You think he's just gonna hand over his collar to you? Not to me, my femme fatale. To you. You, Stella, will get that cat to give you his collar by using my stink. Your feminine charm. Unless his name is Sennel, I don't see this plan working. Whoa, hey, 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 what's the charcoal? Charcoal? Air freshener, tomato juice, cork. Cork, don't you dare. Our work here is done. Meow. I don't know, she looks more like an overgrown squirrel now. Oh, and look at this. This guy's nanny enough to think lawn flamingos are real. Ha! Humans can be so stupid sometimes. Aren't you one behind the monitor? Oh, hush up. No, 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 no! Ah! Hammy, put that cookie down! I love the cookie. Well, Operation Stella Get Late isn't doing so well either. Who goes down? You're a cat. You're a cat. Yeah, right. Well, shoo. 
Ba -ba -ba. Go on, get away from here. My owner does not give scraps to common strays. My god, what a snob. Well, it could be worse. He could be evil. Okay, that's it. I am sick and tired of everybody taking one look at me and running away because they think I'm filthy. I didn't get all prepped and preemed to have some overfed pompous puffball tell me he's too good for me. I got makeup on my butt, dude. No one has ever spoken to me like that. He's bald. I like it. I got a bad feeling this will result in some awkward shipping between these two. So they pack up the food while Tiger here talks for hours about his ever so fascinating life. But by the power of Folgers, does Gladys get up? <laughs> Single childish soccer mom needs coffee! And with only one item left and little time to go, RG starts to have a mental breakdown. Hang on, Vincent! This will only take a second! Vincent? Where? Who's Vincent? Oh! Burn, Vincent, simple slip of the bear. The dung! I Sadly, Heather gives away their presence with her father's acting. Heather? Oh, Heather. I thought you were dead. I learned from the best dad. And now, the moment of truth. Hey, listen, I've got about this long to hand over that wagon load of food to a homicidal bear. And if these buddies aren't on the menu, then I will be. Now let go of my tail! What? And we're this close to reaching our climax because just hit the fan. Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, I've gotta go. Stella, Stella, where are you going? Stella! Ugh, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. Stella, where are you going? Stella! Let's see this. Fire in the hole! Oh, but even after revealing she's a skunk, he's okay with it. Apparently, breeding can cause a cat to lose the ability to smell. Sure, why not? So everyone but RJ is captured, and Gladys, of course, bitches some more. That's because you let them into my house! These little guys would be disposed of quickly and humanely. No, not humanely. As inhumanely as possible. I can only imagine PETA at her doorstep every single day. Seriously, does this woman have to be so mean and cruel? Well, then, this could be her husband. That right there. Is a thing of beauty. That is the most vicious, deceitful, self-serving thing I've ever seen. You keep this up, you're gonna end up just like me, having everything you ever wanted. You know, when the bear is made an animal antagonist, they don't talk for a reason. And this is it! You have got to be the biggest dick in this entire movie that you make bears feel ashamed you're one of them. Thank God for Brother Bear, because you could easily fill in the role of cliched bear villain. So RJ finally realizes that his family means more than his life and decides to go after them by taking the food wagon. What the? Oh. You sorry sick. Um, Stella? Could you maybe wait until after you're rescued before you start complaining? I mean, he came back. Shouldn't that mean something right now? So what he did to us? But he came back. Thank you. You're dead, RJ! And your friends are next! Why? 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 They did nothing but get food for you! Why the hell would you kill them? All because they're being rescued? Why? And if that's not enough, look! Homicidal kids! Ha <laughs> Is this movie over yet? Oh, high score! No, 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 no! Dude? Ah! <laughs> Alright, I'm satisfied now. Can we stop? You're almost done. Suck it up and keep going. I don't want to. You want me to put bleach on next? Depends. Pre or post Soul Society. Post. Continue the movie. Gary Clown. <laughs> so with weed hackers and electric wands on one end and Vincent on the other, what can our heroes do? It's time to break out the soda. Now, Hammy, go! Go! What are you doing? Um, mocking? And now for a major pain. The D Pelter Turbo. 
Prepare for a lot of stinging. Okay, that was pretty cool. And they ruined it. Partially. So Gladys is arrested, Tiger moves in with Stella for more awkward shipping, and RJ is now part of the family. You know, RJ, um, just for the record, if you told us that all that food you were trying to get was to pay back an angry bear, we would have given it to you. Oh, if only you did. The movie would have ended a lot sooner. I'll just let Hammy do the honors. Look! Look! I found my nuts! <laughs> so, what did you think after the second time watching? Well, I'll be honest. It's stupid as hell and I eternally hate you for making me sit through it. But with that said, I will admit it's not as bad as I initially put it. That's not to say it didn't have problems, though. I really don't know what to say. It's just really cliche when it came down to the humor, the antics, the story arc, everything that happened in which didn't go right. Some of the acting was weak, and most of the jokes didn't go off well for me. I guess with the right audience it could be a fine rental, but this isn't something I could watch. Overall, while I could see this concept work, when they did it, it just came off the wrong way. So that's my review of it. Can I go now? Not quite yet. I have another thing to show you. Oh, come on, I did the review. Aren't you satisfied? After that second time? No. So it looks like I'll have to improvise with something far worse. Might I suggest Shark Tail? No, not that one. Somebody help me! <laughs> okay, get me out of here. I don't know how you found this place, but that's not something a little banished spell can't fix. <laughs> No! Powerful spell, huh? Seems that weird helmet was keeping me down this whole time. Hey, time to go! <laughs> oh. Forrest! Forrest, where are you? Now tell me, did you make this helmet? No, I only found it on the ground. I saw it, picked it up, and after watching your last review, I just had the idea of using it. A likely story. Hey, I thought of using it for PvP, but I would have been banned faster than that guild who used Martin's Fury and Alduar. Really? Please don't hurt me. Oh, I won't hurt you. Physically, anyway. I got the coffee. Oh, what a world. Yeah, I always miss them parties. Hi, baby. Ah! Ah! What are you doing? Well, you said we should lick our. No!